Have you ever fantasized about doing something quick and easy to immediately upgrade your mind? Like wave a magic wand, that would be nice, right? I think we all have, and this is reflected in the cognitive enhancement industry, which is big business. Just look at the products you can buy. Prescription pills, stimulants, supplements packed full of exotic mushrooms, all promising to improve your mind. So here's the thing. There's a better way, and you don't even have to spend a penny. The problem with this better way is it's a secret, which I get sounds improbable if it's so great. So that's where I want to begin the story now. This secret, it was first revealed to me in a college course. It was actually my very first class in college. It was Intro to Philosophy, and as a philosophy major, I went in there super pumped, just giddy, ready to learn some big philosophical ideas from the masters like Plato and Nietzsche. So I'm sitting at my little desk, the class begins, and the first thing the professor did was put a slide on the board that had about 20 math equations. That was a curveball. Uh, and then I learned that the math equations had names so now I'm feeling more uncomfortable. I'm looking around thinking, am I in the right class? What the heck is this? Where's Nietzsche? I'm not joking. I got up from my desk, double checked the room number just to make sure I was where I was supposed to be. Well, I was where I was supposed to be. I was in a logic class. The reason why that slide initially confused me was because that was not how I grew up thinking about logic, OK? In hindsight, I know that back then I had a pretty fuzzy definition of what exactly logic is. And since then, I know with great confidence that just about everybody else has a similar fuzzy definition. So what about you? How do you define logic? I ask this question a lot. I do because I run a social media channel called Framing Logic where I make videos on logic. And I know that a definition matters because it frames how we use the thing or don't use the thing. And so running my channel, I was getting the impression that a lot of people had a fuzzy definition of logic. So I wanted to confirm this. I did a informal survey of my subscribers. I asked them, how do you define logic? But tell me without looking it up, just off the top of your head. So I collected their answers and I averaged it out. And I came up with this definition. This is what I call the people's definition of logic. Logic is to think effectively with common sense. It's a fine answer. The only problem is it's missing the most important part of logic, which you will find in the technical definition. Here is that now. Logic is the science of correct reasoning. I love these five words, the science of correct reasoning. So here we have two definitions using logic in two different ways. From my survey, I found that only 10% of people saw logic as a science. Why is this? Well, I believe this is probably because logic is not meeting our expectations of what a science is supposed to look like. I mean, it doesn't take place in a lab, right? The thing is, logic has no looks. It is invisible. It is, you can't hold it in your hand, that's for sure. But logic is exactly what it needs to be in order to accomplish its specific goal of assessing reason. The problem I see is for that other 90% of people who don't see logic as a science. This is an incredible missed opportunity, OK? So that's what I want to talk about today how when we redefine logic, it's an immediate upgrade to a pathway that is the best way to improve our mind. And as I talk about this, I'm going to give you three things that you can walk away with today to start using logic as a science. Before we talk about the science, though, let's talk about reason. Let's be clear. There is good reasoning, and there is bad reasoning. Bad reasoning is making a rash decision. It's 
getting overwhelmed by a complicated problem and then giving up. It is losing your temper in a discussion and then saying something personal. Good reasoning is anticipating a problem before it happens. It's effectively communicating your emotions. Good reasoning is making an investment into the future. Reason is what makes us human. It is. It is the most, easily the most important thing that we do. Logic as the science of reason becomes a very potent tool. I think of logic like fire. Fire can warm our house or it can burn it down. Logic can help us make sense of the world or it can be weaponized against us to deceive and manipulate. And that happens all the time. OK, let's learn some logic. If you're going to make a science, you need three ingredients. You need a set of technical procedures, you need a body of knowledge, and you need a means of testing. When we learn logic, we're basically learning a new set of tools specifically made for logic, for reason. You wouldn't want to build a cabinet without tools, so why should we reason without tools? All right, these tools, you can think of them as procedures, guides, checklists, things like that. All right, here's your first takeaway. Logic is decisive. I want to dispel of this idea that logic is wishy-washy, like it's your opinion versus theirs. No. Case in point, that slide I mentioned, they weren't math equations, they were formal logical arguments. Here's an example. All men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. In a way, this is math-like, because as confident as we can be, that two plus two equals four, we are equally confident in the validity of this argument. It's just that instead of using numbers, we're using words. Your second takeaway is logic is the best tool that we have for self-expression, okay? By far, the most important tool in logic is argumentation, okay? Argumentation, I call this self-expression because really all it is is systematically using evidence to support your ideas, right? Earlier I said that logic doesn't have a lab. Well, in a way, argumentation is logic's lab because it's where we test ideas. You know, argumentation, it's not fighting, it's healthy. We should argue all day long. Arguing is going into work and persuading your colleague to get on your side. It's having a productive debate with your neighbor. It's assessing whether or not we should trust this politician. We've all been in discussions where something's gone off the rails and it's led to hurt feelings. If we think of argumentation as a procedure with specific steps to take, then we're not only more likely to stay on the rails, avoid hurt feelings, but we're going to create better arguments. Procedures are our friends. Just think of the order of operations in math, right? Great procedure. Similarly, in logic, we have an order of operations for argumentation. There is a acronym called CLEAR that can help us remember it too. CLEAR, C-L-E-A-R. Let's go over that now. C is for conclusion. In logic, we start at the end with the conclusion. Uh, this will get everybody on the same page and it needs to be shared. L is for label. We need to label, define every term that we're talking about. E is for evidence. In logic, we call it premises. Premises are little packets of evidence that support the conclusion. A is assess. We need to assess our premises. How are they interacting with one another? Are they consistent, clear, coherent? R is for review. We need to review outside of our argument, sincerely considering other arguments. We need to review inside our argument by determining if our premises reasonably lead to our conclusion. Argumentation can get murky, so hopefully this acronym makes it more clear. Our third takeaway is this. Logic is easy to learn. People in the logic community, yes, there is a small logic community, we all say the same thing. 
Logic should be taught in elementary schools. Teach it to kindergartners because it is that accessible and that important. I believe that more often than not, we're naturally logical. When we become illogical, it's normally because a logical fallacy has somehow entered the equation. I see the world in logical fallacies. I love them. Um, a logical fallacy is an error in reasoning that appears to be correct because the fallacy has somehow tricked our brain to hide the error. You've heard of some of these fallacies, the straw man, ad hominem, the bandwagon effect. There are hundreds of logical fallacies. Why so many? Because for every way we found to reason, we've discovered a way to screw that up. So when you find a logical fallacy, it's like a beacon saying, hey, this is what needs to be fixed. I see the world in logical fallacies because I'm an optimist. I feel so strongly about logic because I think it brings out the best of us. So my ax to grind is, I think logic as a science is too important to be kept a secret. And let's be clear, no one's concealing it from us. It's right there in the open. Logic is a self-inflicted secret. So I think that means we can change it. So in closing, I want to suggest this. I want to encourage you to go out and do something that you're not normally supposed to do, and that is to spread a secret. Thank you.